On December 30th, 2021, on a cold gray day in South Seattle, I loaded up a bag of goods. <clears throat> Shout out if you've seen the video where I answer why and how I do this for restaurant teams. Link in the description. <clears throat> so Anna and I could have dinner at this place called Tomo. Chef Brady Williams opened this white center restaurant last year with the goal of respecting, quote, land, labor, history, and aesthetics, end quote. More on him at the end. I do want to start by showing you the dark, wood-accented, minimally lit interior with a great bar set up at the front of the space, extending back into the narrow but still comfortable dining room. The menu options, there is a single five course tasting menu, which is available to be vegetarian. We would opt for the standard dinner menu. For beverages, we decided to order wine by the glass and do two different kinds at the same time, so we could really taste different producers from their list. St. Lum Wine Company's Chardonnay on the left, a really bright wine with just the right amount of subtle yeast without being overly oaked. And on the right, Joseph E. Pau's Chaos is a sparkling blend of Macabeo and Pereyada, which was everything funky and dry that you're looking for in a pet dad. This first bite is a caramelized onion and fresh cheese tart with dill and grated horseradish. Flavors were well articulated here without being muddied up by one another. The tart shell texture was good too. Nothing to ring home about. This bite was just tasty. Probably my favorite dish of the menu here, chilaquiote squash and stracciatella cream, dandelion and chili. So not only was was this the kind of unpolished but elegant slash nod to Scandinavian vibe that I expected from Tomo, but the rich and tangy dairy swirled with the infused oils, and then you have the texture of the squash. It was just really addicting to eat, and this is the kind of vegetarian dish that thoughtfully showcases vegetables, and I just get excited about that, so bravo on this dish. Next up, another vegetable showcase of sunchokes garnished with yuzu kosho, Swiss chard, and persimmon. I prefer Maillard reaction on sunchokes, so this was right up my alley, and the vegetal fat acid from the Swiss chard made it so that the persimmon didn't make the dish too sweet either. If anything, so much of this dish just ended up texturally regressing to tender on your palate, and that's just my two cents. Continuing our exploration of the wine list, Domaine d'Anjou Benessis Supernova, an orange wine made from muscat grapes. Tasting this was a burstingly floral nose, but a dry palate experience. And on the right, Vina Gonzalez Bastia's Tinaja, a natural Chilean pais, which balanced juiciness and a lot of those holiday spices like anise and even spruce. This is weather vane scallop, seared and served with potato, cabbage, and a gooey duck XO sauce. This might sound like a weird way to recall this dish, but it just makes me think about the word ratio. Eating this was like 90% cabbage and scallop, and so it was effectively six or seven of the same bite. Everything was technically spot on. I just think I wanted some additional garnishes or textures here. Super cool custom steak knives. Let's take a second to marvel at these. Pork collar came next, served with winter squash and nasturtium. The pork was good. I'm super familiar with this cut. I used to cook this on my station all the time. I think I was just craving another facet to this dish, like another hit of smoke on the pork or a spice or an acidic garnish. Don't get me wrong, simplicity is incredibly sexy and wildly difficult, but where I had qualms with the scallop dish being a little bit monotonous, Anna was left wanting more on this course. Transitioning to the sweet presentations, we did opt for the kakigori service, which is a gigantic mound of light and airy cream with delicate ice underneath. This was garnished with local apples and flavors of fennel. We really enjoyed this, and I think it's a must to complete your meal, not just from an experience standpoint, because they really nailed this execution, but for food quantity as well. Next to that, a plated dessert of Japanese sweet potato, both roasted and mixed with pickled ginger, as well as turned into an ice cream with miso caramel and toasted meringue. Texturally interesting here with enough acidity and earthiness to make it fun to eat. Last up, some flavored marshmallows got set down with our check, which includes a 20% service charge, bringing the total for the two of us to $318.44. As promised, I'm going to share a little bit more about Chef Brady here at the end because I did have the pleasure of speaking with him on the Repertoire podcast, which we're releasing on the day that this video goes live. So if you want to hear more about his philosophy at Tomo, his background, how he's doing some pretty cool strategies for his staff, like a four-day work week and guest chef dinners, definitely check that out in the description or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Where should I go eat next? Please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like the video before you leave. As always, thanks for your attention. My name is Justin Kana, and I hope you have a good one.